Well, as I said in the last video, it's time to get on with the part of the job that I like least, quite frankly, and that is the cabinet. So, to move in that direction, the first thing I did was remove all the uh, adornments that are stuck to the cabinet. We have that uh, metallic rail around the front that came out, as did that bottom base, uh, whatever that thing's called. Very dirty. These two grills are on the side of the cabinet where the tweeters are. And speaking of the tweeters, here we have them. And the good news is that they're both working. I um, connected the radio up to the actual speaker and uh, connected the tweeters as well so that I could get an idea of whether this, uh, the tweeters needed any kind of restoration, but uh, they don't, which is a good thing because I didn't really want to get into that. The other little adjustment, the other little correction that was made was to replace that uh, metallic lid that goes over the FM section. And I may do this better later, but for now, I made this out of cardboard and covered it in this aluminium foil, taking care to ensure that it all makes contact. Uh, these uh, foil, um, this foil tape has a habit of not uh, making electrical connection if you just uh, stick it with the with the sticky side. So I bent it over on one end, tested it with the multimeter, and there is continuity. The hole in the middle there is for the tube, and I made it a bit bigger on purpose so that we can get some heat dissipated. I ran out of tape, as you can see, but that's just a little strip I'll put on later. The metallic section is bent under the lid so that when it gets placed, it fits snugly, and there is indeed electrical connection between the chassis and the uh, the aluminium foil. Let's we'll just test that. So that's on chassis. And there we have it. All sections of the aluminium foil are electrically connected to the chassis, which is exactly what I want. And the working tweeters were not the only good surprise. The other one was that when I had stripped the cabinet, as you can see it here, and um, I started doing some wet sanding. I found that most of the damage was actually just dirt and grime. I wet sanded this, really attacked any scratches and marks that were on here and blemishes. They all came away and I'm left with what looks like a pretty good condition cabinet. When I apply lacquer to this, I believe that the tonality will be the same. There are no other dents or anything like that in the cabinet. And I may just get away with not having to go down to the bare wood, which I really would like to avoid. The only exception is a little piece here. There was a small chip in the wood over here, which I filled with wood filler. And after sanding it down, I'll see if it comes close enough to the color of the cabinet, or at least enough to give it a try with lacquer. I'm going to try one layer of lacquer and uh, see what the result is. I won't go too far with that, so that if I do have to go back down to the wood, I'm not going to have to undo too much of the work that I've done. So this cabinet is in very, very good shape, which is brilliant. The inside cleaned up pretty well as well. Most of it was just grime. And it's actually in very good condition now. So I think it's ready for the spray can. If we look at the underside of the cabinet, we notice something little bit odd here and that is 
these marks here this is it seems almost like burn marks or the result of excessive heat rising to this metal plate which acts as the uh, dipolar antenna for FM the internal antenna by the way the internal antenna comes around here that's a metal sheet it's uh, stapled along there goes along there there's the middle there's the other part of the dipole all the way down the side and then in the middle here it's ready to go off to the plug antenna plug that fits in the back but this uh, burn mark these marks here got me thinking about the excessive heat in this unit and this is directly above where the output tube is the EL84 so obviously a lot of heat was being dissipated by this tube which is normal it's not unexpected I was just wondering if it's the normal amount of heat or if it's uh, excessive so I decided a little bit more in-depth look into this would be warranted I started giving some more thought to this and I was trying to determine what could be the cause of this excessive heat on the uh, EL84 tube, that output tube over there. Now the heat is obvious, it's uh, the staining on the top of the chassis, there were these melted capacitors over here, very melted, and they were very close to the EL84. Uh, the wiring, some of the wiring is charred and in fact one of them, this yellow one over there, this is the heater wire uh, heater voltage it's uh, actually for the dial lamp I replaced because it was actually melted on there so that was obvious that was the closest uh, wire to the tube and uh, it had got so hot that it actually melted so there's obviously a problem there now the first possibility was that the tube was defective it could have been um, passing too much heat uh, over straining it and uh, therefore causing the problem. So what I did was, uh, knowing that the tube works because we have sound, the quality of the sound is good. There's no distortion, no apparent distortion. So the tube works well. However, that doesn't mean that uh, there could be couldn't be something wrong internally that uh, is not visible and that could be causing the success of dissipation. So I replaced it with a another tube, and um, some of the measurements I did, which I will show you in a minute proved to be the, practically the same. So it's not the defective tube. Option number two is poor ventilation. Now that's pretty likely because um, this is a small cabinet. This is one chassis that's been used in various cabinets. This is the smallest of the cabinets. And there is, because of the PC board at the bottom here, you don't have natural airflow coming in from the bottom. There are no holes in the bottom of the cabinet either. So all the air that's coming in is actually coming in from the back. More than likely, somebody had placed this thing against the wall or against a, a cabinet of sorts, and therefore the flow of air at the back could have been restricted. Now that would make it even worse, especially if, uh, if they were in a warm environment. So you'd the air not flowing in the back and out the back would cause an internal heating of the, of the whole chassis. And obviously the areas around the tube that are that are causing that is causing the majority of the heat would be the ones that we would be most affected so that was probably one of the reasons the other one which is something that I can look at was uh, the possibility that the tube was biased too hot this tube here is biased with this resistor that goes to ground the cathode resistor which is 200 ohms and it measures fine. I think it measures 201 ohms. So the resistor is fine. Now that causes through uh, by virtue of this cathode current flowing through and out the cathode through the valve out the cathode it creates a voltage at the cathode a positive voltage. Now they indicate here for FM 7.4 volts and for AM 6.8 volts. That's what we expect to find here. What this does is if you've got 7.4 volts there and 200 ohm resistor, you would have 34 milliamps, 
7.4 volts divided by 200 comes to 34 milliamps on FM according to this and this says 6.8 so 6.8 divided by 200 34 milliamps according to that. Now there is a an discrepancy here which is difficult to, to figure out and that is the higher the voltage here the higher the current will be. The higher the current the higher this voltage and what we have here is the anode voltage that we should measure and it says here for FM 245 for AM 248. For FM it says 31.5 milliamps anode current and for AM it says 34.8 milliamps anode current. Now these aren't the same as the cathode current because this has also got a grid current coming in which sums to the anode current and they both flow out the cathode or through the cathode resistor to ground. So this current should be smaller than that one. However, by this measurement here, 7.4 volts at uh, FM, uh, it's higher than the AM value and here the FM voltage is lower than the AM value. So my belief is, and this does, uh, this does get confirmed when I show you some measurements, my belief is that they've got this the wrong way around. The FM value should be 6.8 and the AM value should be 7.4, just as the FM voltage should be 245 and the AM 248. So if we measure this, these voltages, let's forget about the, the flip around for a minute. If we measure this voltage here and we find that it's too high, that would mean that there's more current flowing through this 200 ohm resistor, which would mean that there's more current flowing in through the anode and the grid than is designed uh, into the system. So we could get this overheating by virtue of the valve being uh, biased too hot, as the terminology goes. So I set it up and measured it, and I'll show you what we get. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure the cathode voltage on the EL84 on FM first, so it's on FM, it's been on for a little while so that uh, it heats up properly and stabilizes. I have the multimeter ground connected to the chassis ground and I'm going to measure the cathode voltage at the top of that cathode resistor. And I get 7.27, 7.28, 7.29. Let's call it 7.3. Let's call it 7.3. I get 7.3 volts. And if I flip it to medium wave, I'm at 7.82. Call it 7.8. So I'm a, bit, I'm a bit higher than I expected, or that I want, because here it gives me FM 7.4, AM, or medium wave, 6.8. What I'm actually getting is the medium wave value higher than the FM value, which is what led me to believe that this might be incorrect over here. And what further leads me to, to believe that there's an error on the schematic in terms of values is because the values for the anode voltage here, 245 for FM, is lower than 248 for AM, or medium wave. So I would expect that the uh, 245 anode voltage would produce a lower voltage than 248, which means that um, these two may well be reversed, or those two may well be reversed. We'll check in a minute. So what I have here then is a slightly higher voltage. I have 7.8 and 7.3. So I am a little bit over on these values, which means on 7.8 I'm getting 39 milliamps of cathode current, which is slightly higher than what I wanted. And on uh, 7.3, I'm getting uh, 36 and a half milliamps, which is also slightly higher than I wanted. And also, as is indicated here, remember that this voltage, uh, this current here is lower than that one because that one there is the sum of the anode current and the grid current. Uh, there is actually a ratio that they, they quote, but it doesn't matter for now. So I'm, I've got this, uh, this tube running slightly high in terms of uh, bias. Probably not sufficient to cause a problem, probably far from it, but um, it is slightly high. So this then leads me to 
think about the B+. Plus. Now, if you recall, when I first powered it up and measured the voltages, they were slightly, slightly higher. When I say slightly, I think they were about 5% higher than they should have been, 5 to 7%. So that could well be the cause of this uh, slight rise in voltage over here. So let's measure those. Now, I've set it for FM, and I'm going to measure three voltages. Basically, the three B pluses. The first one is the voltage across the first filter cap on the schematic. The second one is over the second filter cap. And the third one across the third filter cap. Now, that's these voltages here. And they actually state what they should be. This one here is the voltage that comes back to the output of the selenium rectifier and it should be 260 on FM. This second one, I call this the second one because it's the next in line, should be 215, no that's the wrong one, sorry, should be 224 on FM and the third one should be 215 on FM. Okay, let's see what we get. So the first B plus, 273.9274. So 274, it should be 260. The second B plus, 234, 234 volts, 234 and it should be 224. The third one, 230, 230 and it should be 215. So we have slight variations there. Let's look at this on medium wave. Here I should have 265. Wrong one. Two seventy nine, two eighty. I have two eighty and it should be two sixty five. So slightly higher there. The second one, two fifty, two fifty and it should be two thirty six. And the third one. 245. 245 and it should be 229. So we do have a slightly higher value here. The voltage is slightly higher. I expect that because I've got 235 volts AC mains here instead of 220 or 230. So um, I would expect it to be higher anyway. I could put a resistor in series with the, at the output of the selenium rectifier before the first filter cap. That would reduce it. I would have to calculate it according to current. That would reduce the voltage that I need there. I need to drop about, uh, what is it, 14, 15 volts in both cases. However, it will not affect my heater voltage. So I've got to check what the heater voltage is. I'll put this on AC. 6.56. Okay. 6.56 and I should have 6.3. So that is slightly higher as well. Which means that if I reduce the B+, I will be running the heaters constantly at about 3% higher than they should be, which isn't really a problem. But since I need to reduce the, uh, the voltages overall, there's a better way of doing this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate what resistance I need on the AC mains line coming in to drop the, the, the value of the voltage coming into the power transformer input, the primary. If I do that, then I'm reducing the mains voltage and that will have an effect on the DC voltage produced as well as the heater current, heater voltage. Uh, so both transformer outputs will be, secondaries will be lower. That might be the best way to do it. So time for a few calcs. Right, so we've got all the voltages down. B plus one, B plus two, B plus three, the FM values the medium wave values. This is what we've got in black. This is what we should have in blue. And I've calculated the percentage errors on here. All of them are high. Um, they vary from 4.5 to about 7% too high. And then the heater voltages of 6.56 is 4.1% too high. So 
if I were to reduce the mains voltage by putting a resistor in series, I think I'm going to go with the around 4%, um, 4% uh, difference. And um, what I have also from the schematic and also confirmed by measurement is the mains current of about 215 milliamps. Uh, it should actually vary slightly, but because the main uh, current draw is actually from the heaters, there's not that much difference between the medium wave and the FM uh, settings. So we've got 215 milliamps uh, coming in, and uh, we want to drop the voltage, which at the moment is um, mains is about 235 volts AC. I want to drop four percent. Four percent comes to approximately, approximately call it nine, ten volts. So ten volts AC um, at two hundred and fifteen milliamps. So the resistor I need is ten over two fifteen, approximately. What does that come to? Five, four point seven thereabouts. Call it 4K7, 47 ohms actually. And um, obviously by putting in this resistor, the mains voltage drops uh, from 235 to, let's call it 225 or so, if we drop the 10 volts. It then affects the whole uh, consumption thing here. It affects everything because the lower voltage will result in a lower voltage on the positive side on the uh, secondary of the transformer. It will result in different current kind of draws uh, by the various valves, and then it will then affect back to the uh, the current draw here. But this should work damn near close enough. So I'm going to put in the uh, 47 ohm resistor, and then we'll take some more measurements and see what we've got. So here it is, 47 ohm resistor. This is a 10 watt resistor, and um, I've tacked it in between the neutral and the connection to the power transformer. So we basically got uh, 47 ohm in series with the input of the uh, power transformer. This resistor has a strange system which I hadn't seen before. It has a soldered tag on there which uh, melts if it, um, if it starts overheating. So you can actually save the resistor as opposed to getting it to burn out, it'll actually just uh, melt that salt at the top there. And um, that'll give you an indication that uh, this resistor is overheating. So you basically got a, a fuse, a thermal fuse in here, automatically as it were. I've also put in a, a bit of uh, heat shrink, which I'm going to shrink in if, this, uh, if the voltages work out okay. This is just so that we don't have any loose uh, 220 volts or 230 volts flying around. if. Uh, if this thing touches uh, the case or something similar, just for safety. Okay, here's what we got. The 47 ohm resistor is in place. Switched it on, did all the testing again. And um, this is what we've left, we're have left we left with. FM 259 versus 260. 222 versus 224. 219 versus 216. These voltages are bang on, as close as you're going to get. Uh, there's a difference of 1 volt here on medium wave, a difference of 1 volt there, a difference of 4 volts on B plus 3. Um, these are, that's it, it's actually worked out. 47 ohm seems to be the exact uh, value for this. Obviously it'll change if, uh, if this is connected to a different voltage source, a different AC voltage uh, value. I happen to have 235 here, somebody might have 225, 230, so the voltages will be slightly lower. But that is the key. They'll be slightly lower than they're supposed to be, which means that um, the whole system will be slightly less stressed than if they were over. Uh, the important thing here is this value here. I now have 6.25 volts AC on the heaters as opposed to 6.3. That is near and damn it 100% accurate. The other thing to look at is what resistor did I put in there? That's a, a 10 watt resistor that I put in. And why 10 watt? Um, it's actually overkill, but that's what you should do with these things. Um, the power here, I have 215 milliamps. So power is I squared R, which is 0.215 squared times 47. And that comes near as damn it to, I think it is, 2.2, 2.2 watts. 
I've put in 10 watts, so that's cool. Excuse the pun. Um, 10 watt resistor. If it ever does oh, really overheat, it'll melt that little uh, pad on there. I've got to make a note that if this thing stops working because of mains failure, I should look at that resistor to ensure that it's um, that it's not melted off uh, due to overheating. And it could happen. The 10 watt resistor does uh, handle 2.2 watts very, very well, but the heat has to go somewhere. So you've got to make sure that ventilation is possible in the within the cabinet and uh, that you, you can actually get rid of the heat. And uh, the key factor here, I think, uh, in response to the original uh, question that raised this whole uh, section is why is that heater, uh, why is there so much heat inside the cabinet? Why are there so many um, signs of overheating? I would say it's probably because of poor ventilation. Uh, somebody put this thing against the wall, literally, and uh, all the heat that was being generated within the radio was staying within the radio. So you've got no choice but to, to uh, there was no, no alternative but to start showing some scorch marks, overheating marks within the cabinet, melting some capacitors, melting some wires. And that's it. So um, we've solved this, this little question uh, for now. I've got a little bit more to do on prepping and finalizing the cabinet and all those adornments that go on the cabinet. There's a fair amount of polishing to do. Uh, some of it's actually coming out very, very well. So I think uh, this will be the end of this particular video for now. And the last one, which I hope will be very soon, will be the final result with uh, everything going into the cabinet and uh, hopefully looking at the final result and, um, and being happy with it. We'll see. All right. Bye for now.